Wait a minute. Now, I, I just thought they were cutting back soldiers. Now nuclear forces, too, seeing as Russia seems to be going just the other way. Is this really the right move about now to the captain who says this isn't about cutting a budget? This is about sending the worst message at the worst time to the worst guy. One of my favorite guests, Captain Chuck Nash. Captain, um, we're going through with it, though. What is this really involved? Neil, this is um, essentially the uh, end stage of the collapse, I think, of uh, any resistance to a strong potential adversary, i.e. Russia. Uh, the administration uh, knew that the uh, Russians were cheating on the Intermediate Range Nuclear Forces Treaty uh, back last June, they announced it. Uh, they don't want to make a big deal out of it for fear of offending the Russians. And then we find out yesterday, the Pentagon announces that we're going to do these cuts uh, to our nuclear arsenal four years ahead of when the treaty calls for us to do it. I mean, the timing for this couldn't be worse, and the stuff that we're cutting couldn't be worse. Well, what is the stuff we're cutting? Instead of taking out some of the silos, we're cutting our submarine-based deterrent because we've got some senators in those states who are trying to protect jobs in those districts. So therefore, instead of taking those things out where everybody, God and everybody knows where those silos are, they're already pre-targeted. You can't target the submarines. It is, the, it is our most valuable and difficult to replace uh, leg of the triad. So, but that's where we're going to take the cuts so that we can protect the jobs in the states where the silos are dug in the ground. Now, there's always the argument, maybe it's a bit simplistic, Captain, that we have more than a w enough bad stuff to do bad things to them and they sure. to us, so that this is really a rounding error on a rounding error as far as cuts. You say what? I say we are, we are decrementing the most potent part of our triad, and the Russians are renewing and building new elements of their triad. So in other so, words, they're not doing the cuts that they were supposed to from the last agreement, because the Russians argue just the opposite. You say they're lying. They are. They're modernizing. They've been caught. They've tested three missiles that are in violation of treaties that they've signed. So at the same time, that Putin has taken over the Crimea. He's now staging these uh, faux riots in eastern Ukraine, and he's got tens of thousands of troops on the border. We're four years ahead of a treaty requirement, and they're, they're abrogating all their treaties. Not all their treaties. That's an overstatement. They're abrogating. They're in violation of two treaties, okay? And so here we are taking the best of our triad down while they're modernizing. At the, at the wrong time. It, uh, oh. real, real quick, Kevin, I, I don't know if you had a chance to see, you probably had this fight that broke out of the Ukrainian parliament, but I, I, I wonder how real it was. It was between those loyal to Russia versus those loyal to the Ukraine. Um, I always think if I'm Vladimir Putin, I use this as an excuse to intervene because it's just uh, bedlam taking hold in, in, my former, uh, in my former satellite. What do you say? Neil, that's, that's what they're staging here. Uh, he is looking for an excuse. He's going to keep that ratcheted up, keep the tensions high. You've got the internal uh, struggles, and he's just exacerbating the whole thing. And at some point when he wants to, he'll just flip a switch, and then the troops will move in and say, we're going to do it to restore stability and bring peace back to the eastern Ukraine. Captain, it's always an honor to have you. Thank you very, very much. My pleasure, sir. Thank you.